Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. Thank you for joining us. Hurricane Dorian is slamming parts of the northwestern Bahamas. The storm made landfall as a Category 5 storm in the Abaco Islands Sunday afternoon. It is the strongest hurricane in modern records for the area. The storm's maximum sustained winds have increased to 185 miles per hour, and forecasters say a life-threatening storm surge of up to 23 feet is possible there. Well, in case you haven't guessed by now, Dorian is as much a manufactured political storm as it is a geoengineered hurricane. The climate change and carbon trading billionaires are prepared to propagandize this to the hilt. And like the neuralizer in the movie Men in Black, the memory of Jeffrey Epstein has been erased from the public mind. You've always heard that the eye of the storm is calm. Now look at the rotation of the clouds inside the eye of Dorian and how they rotate nearly as fast as the eye wall with 175 mile an hour winds. Next we see what appears to be aerosol sprayed inside the eye of the storm. All of those long thin clouds appear to be aircraft aerosols. When you run the video in reverse, you can see how the trails become longer and shorter as the frame rocks back and forth. Actually, aluminum dust is called for in the Solarian Corporation microwave satellite patent designed for weather control and mitigation of hurricanes. Any technology that can weaken a hurricane can be reverse engineered to make it stronger. Dorian was almost stalled at Elbow K with 185 mile an hour winds at 2 p.m. on Sunday. The barometric pressure at landfall was an ominous 911 or 911 millibars, an interesting number with the 18th anniversary of that false flag event coming on Wednesday after next. Other investigators like Mike Morales, Rant Smith, and Jim Lee have provided more technical evidence that Dorian was engineered as a weaponized hurricane. Look for these links in the description box. But the big story may be the agenda for this storm as economic warfare against China, who has been purchasing seaports in the Bahamas. President Trump recently floated the idea of buying Greenland, a territory owned by Denmark. The Danish cargo shipping line is Maersk, an aggressive company involved in shipping for China, and probably much more, including weapons and human trafficking. And the Bahamas are also known as tax shelters for wealthy alien residents. And with the current move to repatriate manufacturing from China back to the United States, it follows that offshore tax shelters for the greedy are also under attack. Now listen to Red Pill News report the findings of three days, three nights. You're listening to Red Pill 78. I am the Corruption Detector, and this is your Red Pill News. Well, guys, we've got lots of interesting news for you today. We're going to start off with some news about the hurricane from three days and three nights. Let's go ahead and take a look. Well, it starts off with this uh, tweet thread right here. It says, Dead Center Dorian. The other day, Trump said, It looks like this storm will hit dead center. Let's explore the odds that Dorian would make a dead center hit on Epstein Island and the Chinese Denmark ports in the Bahamas as a Cat 5 before turning northeast. We'll go ahead and take a look right here. This is exactly where it came. Went straight through the British Virgin Islands, which was right there in Jeffrey's Island. Scheduled to go up through here, directly between the Chinese and the Denmark ports. China and Denmark both have been strangely in the news lately due to President Trump and his uh, regular antics. And then it is supposed to head up the coast like that. Now, uh, number two, Chinese container ports in the Bahamas. Would you be surprised to learn that the Chinese have been using our $500 billion annual trade deficit to buy up all the ports near America? Thanks, trader politicians. There are two massive complexes in the Bahamas, dead center in Dorian's path. And right there, you can take a look at it. And that's exactly what the hurricane looks like, a big monster. Denmark and Chinese partnership in the Bahamas. Remember when Trump asked Denmark to sell us Greenland? Hmm. Maersk is the largest company in Denmark. Maersk just happened to partner with Shanghai on the port in Freeport, Bahamas, that just got a dead center hit from Dorian. 
Number four, Maersk has a seven-pointed star for a logo. Nothing to see here. You probably recognize the seven-pointed star from Game of Thrones, also those handy Masonic badges worn by Chips and Harris County GHWB sheriffs. Plus, all the witches love this symbol. Even the Jordanian flag uses it. Let's take a look at this graphic a little closer right there. And you can see everything that he's talking about. Of course, it was also in Game of Thrones. Look at that. Now, number five, Maersk, creepy tweet from August 12th, 2019. Nothing to see here. Maersk thought it was good corporate branding three weeks ago to post this creepy face with a comment about our reptilian brains. Hmm, WTF. Triggered by Trump's Greenland comment, perhaps? Evergreen shipping containers? And there is the post. God, that is just a little bit unsettling. Very, very strange corporate branding there. Uh, number six, what are the odds? So Dorian just happened to hit dead center between the sketchy Chinese and Denmark ports just off our coast with a margin of error of less than one nautical mile. And yet it suddenly is beginning to turn northeast away from Florida. Watch the water, perhaps. <laughs> there we go. Bring another one in. Gotta love it. And of course, it is a storm. Now, was Abaco Island a trafficking hub? Here's a 2015 article calling Abaco the Disneyland of the Bahamas. Gee, what a handy location for a quick trafficking trip from Broward County to pick up a few young tourists from a docked container ship. Marsh Harbor was wiped out by Hurricane Dorian. There it is right there. It does look like a nice, beautiful place to visit. Number eight, deep water submarine access. Everyone knows the water in the Bahamas is only about 25 feet deep in many places. However, right next to Freeport, the water depth is very deep. The trenches just offshore to drop to thousands of feet very quickly. And there we can see from Google Maps, that is extremely deep right there. Number nine, watch the water. If dead center Dorian turns northeast and only creates heavy rain in the U.S., I must ask what we just witnessed. If patriots control the weather, we would not only risk collateral damage if the threat of rogue weapons was immense and no other option was available. Number 10, what about Harvey in August 2017? Let's say George H.W. Bush had underground nukes stored as a threat below refineries near his home in Austin. Can't bomb from above. What if we had to flood the entire city to save millions? 68 people died. Were 20 million saved? Was LV their payback? That would be Las Vegas, of course. Number 11, what about Florence in September of 2018? Did you know Florence made landfall on No Name Island in North Carolina with a dead center hit at the New Brunswick nuclear plant? Did we flood them out as well? Can't bomb a bunker underneath a nuclear plant. That storm also dissipated quickly. Now, right there, No Name Island, the island where landfall occurred just happened to be called No Name Island. What are the odds? There it is. And Florence Storm Track dead center hit on New Brunswick nuclear plant in September of 2018. That is pretty incredible. And he says, have a Corona light and relax. If we control the weather now, we controlled the weather in 2017. The best place to hide underground bunkers would be under things you can't bomb. That would be refineries, Harvey, nuclear plants, Florence, casinos, Las Vegas, airports, DIA, islands, Dorian. Many are missing the reference to Corona, light. Go to qmap.pub, do a keyword search for the phrase Corona light, or it's just Corona, pardon me, and see what Q says about it. So you know I didn't make this up after the fact. I posted the first reference to a direct hit on the Chinese port in Freeport back on August 29th, Thursday, when the storm was 500 miles away. On August 31st, Saturday, I posted the north turn and weakening would occur after the destruction of Freeport. And he posts the uh, uh, pictures of his tweets on that day. Watch the water. Dorian passed directly over. Uh, Jeffrey's Torture Island. Will it hit the Chinese port or turn north harmlessly? Dorian storm track over the island, just missed Puerto Rico, takes out Chinese port in Freeport, Bahamas, turns north along coast, weakens dramatically. Who controls Corona? Well, let's go ahead and uh, pull up QMAP.pub and we'll take a look to see what he says about Corona. Well, and unfortunately, QMAP.pub is down, so uh, I, I will have to follow up on that later. Uh, but the things that Three Days and Three Nights talks about here in this post, I think they sound like they could be pretty plausible. 
All right, I've actually gone to uh, QAnonPosts.io, and looks like on August 30th, that was we had several posts which show Corona task route, Corona now offline, Corona new control, Corona now offline, Corona now offline, blind eyes in the sky, shall we play a game? Uh, so it seems like this has something to do with some type of uh, mi missile system, which is what he's referring to in the post, if there were missiles underneath each of those uh, spots where the storms went through. Uh, and then we also had this post here, seals are wonderful creatures, heard they work fast at capturing their prey, Prey, silence is golden, Corona offline, deactivated, games are fun. Uh, so, I, I, like I said earlier, I do think that the stuff that uh, uh, Three Days, Three Nights said in these tweets is uh, pretty plausible. It's uh, neat to think about. Uh, could this storm, could these storm systems be controlled by us, by the good guys, designed specifically to take these cabal weapon systems offline? What do you guys think?